That's got me going. Yeah. It's the great Bruce Springsteen with Empty Sky, and good evening, everyone. It's uh, it's me with my my Empty Sky here. We'll fill it together. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Terry's eating birthday cake. All right, Terry. Let's hear it for Virgos. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to me. It's the 13th of September. It's great. Great day to have been born. And I'm 59. 59 uh, candles on the birthday cake today, so thanks, uh, wow, hundreds of uh, birthday wishes today, very, very greatly appreciated, thank you everyone. Um, yeah, this is really getting fun, what can I say? Um, so, it's, uh, this is my Spirit Talk project, and um, we're doing this every couple nights, and that's the plan, and it's going very well. I uh, was absolutely stunned and amazed to see about 1,500 hits from uh, my talk on Saturday night. That's really exciting. Thank you, thank you. Um, excuse me. And um, I'm going to just be a little bit more uh, proactive here uh, about um, supporting uh, me and what I do or working with me. Thank you. Um, so I'm a channel, and um, I'm going to talk, as you know, if you've been here before, most of you probably have. Uh, I'm going to talk for about an hour here. And I'm going to weave the, uh, do my best to weave the issues of the day, and there are many to talk about, as always, uh, into some sort of a context about consciousness and empowerment and, um, yeah, raising our vibration, opening our hearts, working with, uh, working with uh, spirit, working with our guides, these kinds of things. And uh, then we'll, uh, we'll end it with a, uh, a prayer or meditation uh, from my guides. So... Um, it's great. It's great fun. 
um, it's a powerful time. Um, and so thank you all again for joining me, and I want to thank uh, one more time Brenda Garcia for all of her support in uh, helping me to build this great audience here uh, that we have now. It's wonderful. Truly grateful, Brenda. And um, thank you to um, uh, Tina um, out there in Oklahoma, yeah, who has also been uh, posting uh, the groups for us. Thank you, Tina, for all your love and support. Uh, thank you to Arancha, to my dear partner in Spain, uh, who has been, um, uh, yeah, helping me with everything I need to do uh, since uh, since we met over the last couple of years. So it's uh, it's been a, an amazing journey. Thank you, Arancha, from the bottom of my heart. And um, thanks, everyone else here, for listening in and all that. So anyway, um, a couple things. Yeah, I'm going to get better about this, as I said. Yeah, that's my intention here. Um, there are three or four ways that you can support what I do, and I can help you uh, in, in, uh, aside from what we're doing here together. Uh, we can do Skype sessions together, and I'll do another one of those tomorrow night, Wednesday, at 9 p.m., and um, basically the idea is that um, over the space of an hour, I can work with four or five people, and uh, we'll all be on the same Skype call, and uh, we'll do a bit of um, focused uh, channeling work together. Uh, so if you have issues uh, or confusions that between me and my guides, we can help you to clear those up and uh, move you to the next uh, step on your journey. So that is available. If you want to find out about that, please text me. Um, yeah, there's Aiden. Very good. Um, so Skype uh, groups, and then you're welcome to come to me for a session and all of that information. Uh, it's a channeled reading, basically. Uh, those, uh, the information for that is on my website, which is lumartin.eu. And um, finally, donations are always very greatly appreciated. I receive some from time to time. It helps enormously. And uh, I have a PayPal account. And if you send that to my email at lightheart2012 at gmail.com, that will get to me as well. And you're also invited to uh, buy an ebook. Uh, from from myself here, which is also on my website, and it's called The Invitation. And so that's that. Okay, got that out of the way. Thank you. Thank you. So I was playing um, Bruce Springsteen here, and um, the song is Empty Sky. And of course, um, this, um, uh, this, uh, that album, that was from the Rising album, and that was written in response to September 11th, in after, uh, after the the World Trade uh, Center attacks and all that. And uh, I want to talk about that a little bit tonight. I want to dive into that for, for a little while here. Um, I'll work up to that. Um, and um, da, 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 da. Um, but it's, it's, it's an important topic. And there's some, some actual movement uh, of uh, revealing more of what happened uh, about all of that. So again, we, uh, we live in an amazing time. Um, lose that. Um, so, um, Dakota Pipeline and Hillary's Health, those are the two uh, current events I have to chat about. Um, after, um, where are we at here? Tuesday night. After um, Friday, um, you know, the um, two things happened on Friday. The, um, the Indians uh, suit, uh, you know, um, the protesters suit there um, to stop the pipeline was was turned down, and then 15 minutes later, the Department of Justice overruled itself and uh, called uh, called the legal team for the Lakota people there, and uh, and said that it would be stopped, that uh, they were temporarily stopping, excuse me, the construction on the pipeline, and then um, today, uh, Tuesday, uh, oh, and there's protests happening all over all over the world uh, now about this, which is which is very necessary and important and exciting. Um, you know, let me get my glasses out of the way. Um, then today, uh, they stormed in the police, bless them, in riot gear, and they started arresting uh, a lot of people there. So one minute it's, uh, you know, uh, it's the good cop, the next minute it's the bad cop. So they're still needing a lot of our prayers and support, uh, you know, uh, for that very important uh, issue to, uh, to, to come out right. Uh, and so thank you for your thoughts and prayers about all that and stay stay informed and inspired about all that would be my little pep talk there 
Okay, so um, that's where that's at at the moment. Um, uh, Hillary's health. Yes, uh, is there anyone who hasn't seen this video uh, from 9-11, um, the memorial service where um, Hillary was, um, it was claimed that she was dehydrated and uh, there was a group of secret service people around her and she, one minute she's, from behind she's staggering and kind of falling and then the next minute they're like, um, you know, rushing her into the car uh, face first with her, with her uh, legs buckled underneath her. Um, so, I mean, I haven't talked about this before because, um, you know, um, it, you know, exactly. But now it's like, okay. Um, so anyway, the short version is from what I've read online about all of this is that um, she, um, you know, she suffered a stroke, um, uh, which was either caused by or, or happened, um, you know, as a result of a, of a fall in 2012. And basically, the long story short of it is she, her health is in really bad shape, seriously bad shape, yeah, uh, to the point where um, the, the Democratic Party is considering uh, if they need to replace her or not. Okay, that's interesting. Bernie Sanders, are you available? Let's see what happens with that. Um, can't hold my breath, but it's, it's be a nice idea. Uh, but anyway, the, um, the, uh, the, the bigger point about that is that... Um, you know, the, her deception, the Clintons' deception, uh, you know, this is just another example of the Clintons' incredible um, arrogance and deception, you know, can I say this with a straight face? Yes. Uh, against the American people about uh, getting her into office no matter what, no matter what, no matter what. So, um, you know, the truth does come out, my friends. Thank goodness for that, yeah. Bernie, 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 wouldn't that be nice, Laura, Lucy, yeah, sorry, um, let's hope so, yeah, but anyway, that's, this is, um, you know, as Spirit said, this election is going to be unlike anything we've ever seen, and um, as I've talked about, and, um, you know, we'll get into here again, uh, basically, uh, the truth, you know, uh, the, tr the vibrations of the truth, as David Icke and many other people have said, many, many Spirit Guides have said, the truth vibration is raising. So, you know, this is our um, saving grace, is that we're becoming more discerning and more uh, discriminating and more uh, aligned to our own inner guidance. And um, all the lies and all the pretense that has, um, you know, been sold to us and, and told to us as the truth is, is getting more and more and more exposed every day. So that is a great thing, honestly. And um, it was pretty amazing that this happened, uh, Hillary's collapse at the memorial over uh, Sunday there, because, um, you know, uh, if you follow all this stuff as I do, and many people do here, I'm sure, <clears throat> you've seen many stories about, um, does she have Parkinson's? Uh, does she have, you know, there's many different diagnoses, but um, clearly she's not in good health, my friends. And that alone is enough to, um, you know, uh, raise yet more red flags about uh, the Clintons' lack of honesty and uh, the Clintons' lack of integrity. Um, so, you know, um, if, if, if people were nervous before, they're, they're really worried now. And um, um, I'm going to try to really get into this here tonight, yeah, um, that... Um, and I guess this is a good segue into 9-11, as, as good as any. Um, I listened to, uh, and I'll put this on my page here, I listened again to uh, my friends uh, posted me Marianne Williamson's um, weekly uh, teaching, and she talked about 9-11. So I want to I start to talk about 9-11. So Empty Sky is, you know, just a profoundly beautiful song, and that whole album, uh, The Rising, um, Nothing Man, and, uh, you know... Um, my City in Ruins, there are many, truly, I mean, I think Springsteen is, is a tremendous artist, I love him, and uh, the, the songs on that album were really, you know, spoke to the heart of a lot of the pain that people were feeling after 9-11. Um, two things for me personally about 9-11. Um, in 1989, uh, I was living in L.A., and for a series of reasons, I got invited to go and work in New York uh, with Lynn Andrews uh, in support of her, one of her events there. And so um, I was in New York for uh, a week, um, and I'd grown up in New Jersey for about seven years, 
uh, till uh, about the age of 13. So I'd been to New York many times, but I'd never seen the World Trade Center uh, until in the, I went in 1989. And I happened to be, um, I was on my own, and I was there um, the weekend, Thanksgiving weekend. And um, if you know New York and you know that weekend, um, it's, um, you know, it's a huge holiday, etc. For whatever strange reason, uh, you know, uh, I remember walking around um, Wall Street, seeing the bull on Wall Street and seeing some of the sites there, etc., etc. And I, I walked into, you know, I, I w went down to the World Trade Center to see that. And um, I went up to the top of the World Trade Center and... Um, it was a, you know, it was a gigantic building. I'd been to the John, to the top of the John Hancock building in Chicago. Um, I'd actually, you know, grown up around skyscrapers, uh, being born in Chicago and, and living there at the beginning of my life. But, you know, the World Trade Center was a jaw dropper. There's no doubt about it. And the whole, um, the height of it and the scope of it and the, the power of it and how it just, you know, it loomed over the rest of the city. Uh, it was twice as tall as as any building near it, um, was just pretty amazing. Uh, so I, I knew exactly what that must have been like for people that were, uh, you know, the day that 9-11 happened. Um, for people who were jumping out, out of the building or uh, hit by the plane or whatever, you know, whatever actually really happened there. Um, it, obviously, it was, it was a terrible day and 3,000 people lost their lives. And... Um, the, the, the families of those people, you know, would, will never be the same. Um, and then, of course, we know, sadly, that um, this just came out over the weekend, so might as well talk about this, that um, Christine Todd Whitman, who uh, in the Bush administration as the head of the EPA had assured all the uh, first responders that the air was perfectly safe, and now more people have died from uh, lung disease and, and one emphysema and one disaster after another to their health, uh, then died during the original attack. All right, so you have that. And then, of course, um, we have, um, you know, uh, so I'm going to get into it now, get ready. We have all, if you've ever done any serious re research about 9-11, uh, you, you know that the official story is absolutely preposterous. Um, uh, engineers from all over the world and architects from all over the world have said this over and over again that there is no way that uh, the burning of jet fuel can heat uh, the steel uh, structure of uh, a building that size and bring it down the way it did. And um, uh, so there's, there's reasons why that happened physically. Okay, but I want to talk about why it happened politically, right? Because that's what we're living under. That's what we've been living under for the last 15 years. And it relates to uh, Hillary's health, and it relates to... Uh, the world that we live in right now, and it relates to uh, the economy, the way it's structured, and the way things are run, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, a few more, a few more important details. Um, the day before 9/11 uh, happened, of course, uh, the Pentagon uh, was supposedly also uh, hit by a jetliner. Physical evidence says that 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 never happened. It was a missile. Uh, supposedly, this plane uh, came down in Pennsylvania. The amount of wreckage and the physical evidence of that does not add up either. Uh, so none of the official story physically adds up. Politically, um, who benefited? Well, um, the day before it happened on September 10th, um, the head of the uh, Pentagon, whose name escapes me, um, stuff happens, what was his name? Uh, Rumsfeld, I think. Okay, there we go. He, he said, oh, by the way, folks, we're missing uh, $2 trillion out of the Pentagon budget. And it just so happened that where the crash happened in the Pentagon and what burned down was the records about uh, the missing money, etc. Interesting. And it also, the story goes, that uh, there was um, gold that had been stored underneath the World Trade Center that was meant to be returned, I believe, to Germany, if I have that right. It was meant to be returned. And when the World Trade Center came down, the, the, that gold never had to be accounted for, etc. Also, there's the story of people who knew that it was going to happen. Actually, if, you, if you're really curious and you haven't uh, researched this already uh, t to death, um, uh, there is Frontline on PBS is just replaying um, uh, their documentary called The Man Who Knew. And it was about um, a, uh, an Al-Qaeda expert in the FBI 
who was so convinced that this attack was going to happen that day that he quit his FBI job and he got a job working at the World Trade Center and he died in the attack. Um, there are other many, uh, many other uh, pieces of evidence that, uh, that point to people knew that it was going to happen. Then we have just recently the 28 pages uh, showing that um, in all likelihood the Saudi Arabian government was directly involved in supporting uh, the, the comings and goings of uh, the hijackers, etc. Then we know, of course, that none of them were able to fly a plane uh, worth a damn, uh, let alone, as one of the pilots said, I think it was John Lear, said that uh, what um, they, the U.S. government claimed actually brought the, the uh, towers down was uh, something that no pilot in the world could do. So then you get into uh, remote-controlled airplanes, and uh, these have been happening uh, for, for a while as well. Um, so my best guess, honestly, about the physical part of it is, is these remote-controlled airplanes and what are called particle beam weapons, because um, the physical reality of how the towers fell, that they turned to dust, uh, that uh, the cars around them were melted as well, uh, but there was no uh, physical heat uh, from the actual collapse uh, that could have accounted for the melting of the cars, etc. On and on it goes, yeah? All right. Anyway, politically. So we know that um, the day after it happened, um, the Patriot Act was passed. And it turns out that the Patriot Act, uh, which was about 3,000 pages long, uh, yeah, was passed, or yeah, something like that. It was, it was enormous. Nobody read it before it was passed, and it was passed at like three in the morning, and there was only one dissenting vote in Congress because everyone was in such shock and, and felt like they needed to be patriotic and do something. It turns out that the Patriot Act was based on the Soviet Constitution, if I have that right. So, you know, written from the great minds that brought us Stalin and, uh, and all that political philosophy. So, you know, when the Patriot Act was passed, the Bill of Rights, uh, which had been the, uh, the pinnacle of um, freedom and democracy and uh, uh, legal wisdom, uh, habeas corpus and right to a fair trial and to confront your accuser and uh, to be judged by a jury of your peers and to be uh, held innocent before uh, unless proven guilty, all of that has been, you know, chipped away at and quietly disappearing. And um, as Chris Hedges will tell you, now they can pick you up and hold you anywhere for any reason, and you, they, you never have to give an explanation or an answer other than you're a, a, a bad person. Yeah, And that, that is the world that we live in now. Then, of course, we have uh, NSA and Edward Snowden. I don't want to be too dark here, but uh, Edward Snowden's one of my heroes. And, um, you know, what he's revealed about the NSA, the film by Oliver Stone with uh, Joseph Gordon Hewitt and, and others is about to come out. So that'll be worth seeing. Um, what he's revealed, of course, is that not only have, has the Patriot Act and 9-11 uh, as a means of passing the Patriot Act uh, given uh, the government virtually unquestionable, unlimited um, legal power over our, everyone's rights, but uh, NSA has done the same thing, which is you used to need to war a warrant uh, in order to, uh, a judge's warrant in order to listen into uh, an American uh, citizen's conversation. You don't any longer. Of course, they're listening to everything. The laptop, the, the iPhone, you know, it's all being recorded. It's all being stored, you know, on these uh, gigantic uh, football field-sized uh, databases. And um, uh, Facebook, uh, as I say again, Google, every little click, you know, every like on Facebook, every this video right here that I'm recording now, it's all being recorded somewhere, and our files are being kept. You know, excuse me, um, where was I? I went to Budapest, and um, part of the tour of Budapest was um, the, um, the secret police, <clears throat> and there, uh, I didn't go in, but we passed the, uh, the secret police um, <clears throat> uh, office there, the building, and it was not a source of great joy, you know. So we all know what it looks like um, in George Orwell's 1984 now and in um, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World and in Orwell's Animal Farm, for that matter. It's not, it's not a pretty picture. Okay, so that's, that's that part of the conversation, just to put things in context, right? As if you didn't have enough to worry about already. Um, but again, what's the, what's the positive side of this? Yeah, and there is one, yeah? Um, 
the positive side of all of this, my friends, is once again that we signed up for this and that uh, basically, you know, we are eternal spiritual beings. I, I, I don't believe I know this is true now. We are eternal spiritual beings with a soul and a spirit and a higher self and with guides and our connection to, to the Creator, to whatever name you want to give to the Creator. And so the, the key again is to not get lost in the darkness and the overwhelm and the, they're all out to get us and uh, this disaster and that catastrophe, this lie and that um, agenda and conspiracy. But why am I, why am I here? You know, why, why are we here? Uh, as John Lennon sings, surely not to live in pain and fear. There we go. It's, um, it's, uh, it's up to each of us, of course, to find our hearts and to follow our, our inspiration. And uh, as my guides say, our passion is our purpose. Yeah? So, you know, can you look at, you know, all of these seemingly uh, insoluble and challenging situations and know, K-N-O-W, that you're more than that. That's, that's the invitation, as my guides uh, keep saying here, yeah? That's the invitation. So here, here is uh, maybe a little, uh, a little more hope for all of us, yeah? A little more inspiration, yeah? Now that I've looked down the dark hallway with you. Um, this was Brenda. This was my session with uh, my friend here, and she was good enough to transcribe it, and I'll share a bit of it with you, with her permission. Um, and with my glasses, yeah? So uh, this is my guide speaking. What is the difference between someone who takes their guitar and goes to the open mic on the weekend and plays their guitar or plays regularly in, or someone who plays a, con a concert in a stadium? The only difference is how much of themselves they have allowed their music to, to, to move into their life, how wedded together, how synthesized, unified and surrendered they truly are to being that which they are desiring to express and to become. Did you get all that? You are, you've become more of who you are becoming. It's wonderful. You are owning it. And as you own it, it owns you. That's the freedom and the grace of it. You don't have to any longer keep your life in these different boxes where you say, excuse me, well, there's the spiritual box over here and here's my struggle with the car or the relationship or whatever. They're all going to start to flow more and more together because it's coming from the depth of your truer self. Your life, our experience is coming from the depth of our truer self. Um, you do not need to doubt your truth any longer. You trust your truth. And um, there was another quote there. That's very nice. There was another quote there where my guides say, you, you can't push the river, and the good news is you don't need to. That's good to hear, isn't it? Yeah. So, um... Like, just to weave uh, some more joy into this conversation here, last night as I was thinking about uh, ending my, my 58 and beginning my 59th year, or however that works, yeah, turning 59 today, once again, hallelujah, thank you God, it's a pleasure, happy to be here. Um, what do I find on my little movie search but um, this, um, The Night That Changed America, and it was, um, was the Beatles' 50th anniversary of their... Um, uh, appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show. And so um, everyone uh, had done a, a concert um, in New York um, with great musicians. So they were doing the Beatles, uh, you know, tributes and playing the songs. And then Ringo and Paul were there. And uh, Ringo got up and sang a few songs. And Paul got up and sang a few songs. And then they, they did Sgt. Pepper and uh, w with a little help from my friends. So Paul did the uh, beginning, and Ringo came out after that, and then they wound it up with um, la 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 la. Paul played "Get Back." Anyway, it's just brilliant. Um, "Hey Jude" was the last song of the evening, and it was ecstatic, you know. And that's what that's what I get to. So I do that last night, and then um, I mentioned this to Arancha. I, I had a great time, uh, you know, a little party of one here, and um, then um, so Arancha sends me. Uh, the, the video for Real Love, which was one of the songs that uh, the Beatles put out after John passed away, w one of his last songs. And then there's one other that I, that I love from that, you know, discovered period called um, Free as a Bird, uh, which the video is amazing. Both of them are on my page there if you scroll down. Um, I might end with that one if, if I don't uh, 
run into the copyright police. Um, but so there was that Beatles, you know, all that Beatles. And then I'm reading in The Guardian today that um, Ron Howard, uh, the great filmmaker, in my opinion, uh, has done a documentary about the Beatles, uh, about the Beatles called Eight Days a Week, which is about to come out. And it uh, looks amazing. And um, it's, it's all their uh, live concerts when they were touring for about four years there. Uh, before they quit touring and then just focused on, um, yeah, um, uh, being in the studio. And one of the things I read in the article, uh, again, this is uh, to inspire us, is that um, the Beatles left uh, nine hours of recorded music. Uh, I believe I have that right. Um, and, you know, uh, which, which finished up, uh, for the most part, in 1969 or 1970, and, um, you know, um, musicians the world over uh, and the music uh, buying and listening public have been uh, rocking, rocking our hearts out and, uh, and marveling at the genius of it, right? So I want to, I want to tell you my, uh, my Dr. Peebles story. There's a en very enlightened, beautiful uh, uh, spirit guide who um, uh, channels through many uh, wonderful people. And I've seen him personally through four different channels in my uh, adventures around the states in LA and Arizona and um, I'm spacing out on a few names there but um, uh, anyway Dr. Peebles I was sitting and chatting with him one day he was he's one of the most enlightened spirits uh, I've ever had the pleasure to know and I love him dearly um, and I asked Dr. Peebles what the Christ consciousness was about and um, Dr. Peebles you must know to put it in context is um, uh, he was a medical doctor, and um, he lived, he was a vegetarian, lifelong vegetarian, and he was also a naturopath, and he was an author. He traveled the world, and he passed away uh, just before he turned 100 years of age uh, in the year 1900. So all of this was in the 1800s. And um, he was one of the founders of the spiritualist movement, if you're familiar with that, where people do readings and uh, mediumship in churches and things like this. I've been to a couple of those. They're great. Anyway, so Dr. Peebles is a real sweet character, and I was asking him about Christ consciousness, and he says to me, um, God, can I do my name? He says, uh, do you know this group? Do you know this musical group? They're called The Beatles. And I'm like, uh, yes, Dr. Peebles, I'm, I'm familiar with The Beatles. Yes, yes. He says, that is Christ consciousness. So, Please take that from my heart to yours as my birthday present to you. Yeah, that's what it's all about, my friends. Uh, the passion, the compassion, the joy, the creativity, um, the freedom. You know, I mean, I, I, I got into this a little bit last time. These are all qualities that um, I, I've told the story before uh, that, um, you know, just filled me up to the brim and still it doesn't take much to get me going about the Beatles these, uh, even today. So that was a nice visit uh, between last night, um, a night that changed America and um, real love, free as a bird, and then uh, uh, this film, eight days a week, and so I, I get to share my Dr. Peebles story about the Beatles and Christ consciousness. So what does it all mean? It means that there's more to us than the outer circumstances and that, you know, we're creating a kind of a group consciousness every time we have these little chats together. And um, again, that's my intention, you know, my desire uh, to, to do this, to reach out to you in this way. Yeah, um, that you, you know, that we all have something within us that's much more than anything we've experienced. And um, spirit wants to help us to find it is what it really comes down to. When um, I was just listening to Marianne here talk about 9-11 and talk about um, yeah, how to be of service uh, to, uh, to the world in this uh, powerful time. Yeah, Prince, definitely. Absolutely. I, I think all of us in our enlightened self, in our higher self, in our, in our best self, you know, we're higher self-consciousness, Christ consciousness. Absolutely. So the thing is, you know, um, we're creating this group consciousness. And so, honestly, I mean, I listen back to these talks myself because I'm kind of in an altered state. You know, this is not my normal state of consciousness uh, when I'm doing all this. It's, uh, it really picks me up and lifts me up. And I, I, I feel it every time. So, um, 
again, you're helping me to create this, uh, this, this moment here with you, and we're all creating it together, and it's, uh, it's a great gift. Um, yeah, let me do this one more time here. Um, this is the prayer of um, I choose to believe. Yeah, I'll start to segue into, uh, into the closing here. I won't keep you. Um, let's come together here in this moment and allow yourself to come to peace. So go ahead and close your eyes and take a nice deep breath. Thank you for, for being here. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. And you are poised in your journey at a powerful moment once again. You are choosing your path. You are choosing not to leave anything behind, but to really reach for that which you have dared not imagine possible, feeling that it might be too good to be true, as the saying goes. We like to ask our friends, how good can you stand it? And let us tell you that that is the energy that is truly coming into your world at this time, the unconditional. There are many dreams and desires that you hold in your heart for yourself, for your loved ones, for the world. And so often there is that feeling of yearning and hoping and wishing. So often there, and so often there is the energy of disappointment or confusion or feelings of lack and struggle. To really let love be more powerful than your previous experience is to step into a true moment, a holy moment, a transformational moment. We invite you here and over the next few days as the energies of this profound opening begin to weave their way into your life and whisper their words into your ear that you give yourself every opportunity to trust yourself. And you can do that by telling yourself these words. And I'll say them here. I choose to believe. I choose to believe in my dreams. I choose to believe in a future that works for me and my world. I choose to believe in a loving higher power that knows more and that sees more than I know or see right now. Take a deep breath. I'm going to say it two more times. Let it in. I choose to believe. I choose to believe in my dreams. I choose to believe in a future that works for me and for my world. I choose to believe in a loving higher power that knows more and sees more than I know or see right now. Take a deep breath. And finally, I choose to believe. I choose to believe in my dreams. I choose to believe in a future that works for me and my world. I choose to believe in a loving higher power that knows more and sees more than I know or see right now. This is our invitation to you. If you're willing to believe that, we will make a new agreement with you. And so let us make that new agreement here. And I'll just shift into uh, some channeling here to follow that up. So here we go. <sighs> Dear friends, yeah, like a laser beam from your heart. Let your light go out into the future. The future of your dreams and of your desires. And let spirit step into your time and space right here and now. Take a deep breath. Dear friends, once again, connecting with the angel of vision. That you see clearly. That you feel deeply. That you know truly that you are a spiritual being. Without needing to prove it, discuss it, or debate it, you allow yourself to accept that this is so with the dignity and the grace of your own free will. Take a deep breath. I open my heart to the grace of spirit and to the vision of my future and of the future of my world. I invite the angel of vision into my heart and into my life. I ask the angel of vision to illuminate my mind, 
my heart, my life. I invite the creator of all that is to work with me and through me as an equal, as a partner, neither less than or greater than, but in harmony and balance with spirit and humanity as one. And I give my life and myself full permission for everything and anything to change, to heal, to transform, to transcend the illusions of separation, to set my soul free. I call forth the great ones, the masters, the enlightened ones, the beings of love and light, who guide humanity and overlight the earth to work with me and through me this day to inspire, to empower, and to illuminate my path of joyous service. I call forth a new heaven and a new earth, and I see that my heart, my mind, and my life are the vessel and the vehicle, the receiver, and the building stone of this new consciousness. I let love and happiness, I let goodness and truth, I let joy and prosperity, I let freedom and success guide my path and illuminate my mind, my heart, my life as one. Use me this day, angel of vision, to illuminate the unlimited and the unconditional love of my creator in my life and in this world. I call forth a new heaven and a new earth, and I surrender to it joyously and freely. For this and more than words can say, I am grateful, a blessing to this world, and a blessing to myself. I let it be, and so it is. All right. So here we go. Push the uh, push the envelope one more time. Here, do I have it? I don't. Okay. Whoops. So <laughs> uh, let's see. Can I do this? All right. Well, apologies. I was going to play something. I can't find it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Always a blessing. Always a joy. Um, Commercial one more time. Thanks for all the birthday wishes. This is my idea of a happy birthday. I just had a party. You showed up. We celebrated life together. Thank you for your consciousness. Uh, thank you for your, for your love and light. Um, LouMartin.eu. Peace and blessings. Namaste.